Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. The Signal Oil Program. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, two for the money. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Presently, I'll tell you of nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. As New Year's Day 1945 draws to a close, The Signal Oil Company joins 1,800 Signal gasoline dealers in hoping that the coming year will be a good one for you and for your car, too. During 1944, you know, 150,000 cars wore out each month, one out of every 12 on the road. So yours has been a pretty lucky car so far. But it'll take more than luck alone to make today's cars last out the duration. It'll take thorough, conscientious servicing of every part. And no one gives more conscientious service than your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer. Being in business for himself, he naturally has more incentive to do a better job, the kind of job that will keep you his satisfied customer. Later in the program, I want to tell you about several outstanding signal services. For each one is designed to do for your car the thing you want most today, to help it go farther. But now, the whistler. It's strange, isn't it, how a man can live his life through several decades, simply, quietly, in peaceful obscurity, and suddenly, through one small incident, find his world turned into chaos. For instance, there was Tom Barlow, who lived with his wife, Ellen, in the small seacoast village of Marblehead, and whose whole life had been spent as a lowly driver of the town carry-all. Combination taxi, delivery truck, and tow car. To everyone in Marblehead, he was just old Tom, until that night a few months ago. A raining, stormy night it was, with a feeling in the air of foreboding, if you were particularly sensitive. And the man who came to Tom, just as he was getting ready to go home to dinner with Ellen and Judy, his daughter, wanted to be driven out to Guilford Inlet. It was no pleasant trip on a night like that, lonely, miserable... But a fair was a fair, and Tom started out. Halfway there, they had to cross the inlet, and Tom was just beginning to worry about whether or not the bridge might be washed out. Driver? Driver? Yes, sir. Is that the Guilford Bridge ahead? Yes, sir, that's it. (laughs) Lucky for us, it's still there. You sure picked a night to come out to this godforsaken neck of the woods. When you get to the bridge, stop. Stop? What I said, stop. Mister, there's no need to stop. It's eight miles yet to the inlet. Stop when you get to the bridge. Okay, mister, whatever you say. How much do I owe you? Well, you're not getting out here. How much do I owe you? A dollar and a half, but look, mister. Yeah, two dollars. Keep change. You're crazy, mister. There isn't a house within eight miles of here. I like walking. But, mister, I'm not going to leave you out on this bridge alone. Good night. Well, Tom, that's a queer thing, isn't it? Strange fellow. 
Never did get a good look at his face. He kept it muffled up in his scarf, his hat pulled down low. You've half a mind to run after him, but in ten seconds he's disappeared into the blackness, and you drive back to town wondering, trying to make up your mind whether you should tell somebody about him or not. Then, when you're putting up the cab for the night and you happen to glance in the back, your mind is made up for you. I told him, Sheriff. I said, I'm not going to leave you out on this bridge alone. Mm -hmm. What time was that, Tom? Oh, about two hours ago, nine o'clock. I tried to argue with him, Sheriff, but he just wouldn't listen. Okay, what happened then? Well, then I came on back to the garage, and when I was cleaning out the back of my cab, I found this package. Package? What package? This package right here, what I came to see you about. Here, look for yourself. Cash, $25,000. I thought I'd better turn it in quick. Well, I'll be... Hey, Tom, listen. Huh? You left this man on Gilford Bridge two hours ago? Yeah, that's right. Nine o'clock. Sure was a queer bird, Sheriff. Had a muffler over half of his face. Could hardly hear him talk. I said to him... Hey, Sergeant, get out the car. Get five men. We're going to Gilford Bridge. (laughs) Gary... See anything down there? Something here, Chief. Well, this spot where I left him, Sheriff. Right here. Hey, Chief. Chief, look. Yeah? I found this uh, coat and hat under the bridge. Hey, Eddie, put your flashlight over here. That, that's the coat the man was wearing. And that's his hat, too. You sure, Tom? I'm positive. Oh, Sheriff, dug this muffler out of the water about 20 yards down the stream. <laughs> that's his, too, yes. Yeah. That's what he had over his mouth. Made him talk so peculiar. See, hat, coat, muffler. Looks like he drowned himself, all right. You aiming to drag the inlet, Sheriff? Not tonight, I'm not. In the morning. Anyhow, with that undertow, a body would be two miles out to sea by now. That's right. Huh. Well, what do you suppose he done it for? Poor guy. Poor guy? <laughs> Tom, he left $25,000 in your cab, didn't he? Oh, well, uh, money don't mean much. If you're so low, you want to jump in the river. <laughs> money don't mean much, huh? Listen, Tom, if we don't find that man's body, if nobody claims that money in six months, you know who it belongs to? It belongs to you, Tom. Me? Yes, sir, you. That's the law. Me? If nobody claims it in six months, and if we don't find the body that fits this hat and coat. Well, Tom, that's quite a stroke of luck, isn't it? Imagine, $25,000. More than you've ever dreamed of. And it's yours. Almost. You stand on the bridge and gaze into the dark water below and wonder about your strange passenger. But perhaps you wouldn't wonder if you could see something happening at a lonely house eight miles away at Guilford Inlet. Who's there? Who is it? Well, Mrs. Wilmer, so you don't recognize me. And after I've paid your salary, kept you living here all these years. <gasps> Mr. Ben. Yes, it's me, and don't stand there gawking. Let me in and close the door and make some hot coffee. I'm frozen to the bone. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Same dismal old place. Mr. Ben, where's your hat and coat? You're soaking wet, Mr. Ben. Where's your hat and coat? You're soaking wet, Mr. Ben. Hey, heaven, woman, can't you say anything better than that? Twenty years. Twenty years, and I come home to... Where's your hat and coat, Mr. Ben? Mrs. Wilmy, you're still a fool. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I'll get the coffee. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, sir. You still go down to the village every day and gossip like a fishwife? Well, oh, sir, stop. I... Uh, stop stirring me. Now, listen. While I'm here, you keep away from the village, you understand? Order your groceries by phone. If this morgue still has a phone. Oh, no, sir. Not since you left. Barlow Man is all boarded up. Except in my room. All the better. You'll have the delivery sent once a month then. Nobody's to know that I've come back to Guilford. Is that clear? No one. Uh, uh, yes, sir. If you want coffee... Mrs. Wilmy, for the love of heaven, stop fluttering. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, me. Nothing changed. You're still afraid of me, aren't you? Aren't you? Uh, y- yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, please, sir. Go get the coffee. Uh, yes, sir. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. My brother Tom, 
He still drives that taxi of his, I suppose. Oh, yes. They say down in the village. Never mind your fool gossip. <laughs> still driving a taxi after 20 years. Mr. Happy Go Lucky. Everybody loves good old Tom. Don't they, Mrs. Wilmer? Oh, yes. He's such a cheerful man. And his wife, Ellen, get is out such of here. Get uh, out. Go get the coffee. And don't you babble about Ellen Barlow, you understand? Don't you ever babble to me about Ellen Barlow. Yes, Tom Barlow, if you could see that scene. And your brother Ben sitting in the old family house in Guilford Inlet. Perhaps you wouldn't wonder so about the stranger's disappearance. But you don't see that, and so to you and your wife, Ellen, it's like a dream. <laughs> oh, Ellen. Ellen, it's like a dream. $25,000. Why, we're going to be rich. <laughs> oh, Tom, put me down. Put me down. Oh, we are, Ellen. We are. Even the sheriff thinks so. Oh, oh. We ought to go out and do the town. Well, we'll have plenty of time for that, Tom Barlow. After six months. <laughs> I was just bringing your tea things. Oh, never mind the tea things. Where's my tonic? Heart's pounding like a trip hammer. Uh, right here, sir. On the train. Where's the afternoon paper? Here you are, sir. But there's nothing new about Mr. Tom and the money. Who asked you that? Uh, well, I... Mrs. Wilmy, you're nosy, aren't you? Oh, oh, please, Mr. Ben. Oh, stop <laughs> that sniveling. You're nosy, Mrs. Wilmy. But you are a good housekeeper. Uh, well, I do quiet, try... Be quiet, be quiet. I feel like talking. Yes. Or the tea. No, 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 don't stand up. Sit down here by me. Oh, very You're well. You're going to chat, Mr. Wilmy. I'm expecting a um, business friend of mine today at Five Shop, a Mr. Peterson. Uh-huh. He's going to do something for me. Uh, yes, sir. You and I will chat until he arrives. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, lemon and two sugar, sir. Oh, well. Oh, yes. So you remember after all these years, huh? <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Mrs. Wilmy, I'm a very rich man. I made a good deal of money in the city. Yes, sir. And I've remembered you in my will. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Oh, be quiet, be quiet. You'll be well off when I die, Mrs. Wilmy. Very well off. That's why I think you'll keep your mouth closed about lots of things. Oh, I never I said... feel like talking. Mrs. Wilmy? Did you read that they haven't found the body yet of the man who left the money in my brother's taxi? Oh, yes. They've been dragging me in it for weeks, sir. They've been dragged for years. They won't ever find the body. You know why, Mrs. Wilmy? Because I am the body. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Ben. Sure, I'm the body. Oh. I left that 25000 in Tom's cab. I wanted him to find it. I put it there. But, Mr. Ben... I'm going to break Tom Barlow. You watch. Uh, please don't tell me. I don't want to know. Six months he'll wait. Thinking he's rich every day, more certain. He'll be building air taxes. You watch. I know Tom. He won't wait for six months. Fools around here to lend him money on speculation. Oh. He'll get in deep. You watch. Tom, happy go lucky. Oh. Always said he could get along without money. Oh. Married Ellen on a shoestring. Shoestring? And I could have given her everything. I could have given her clothes, a house in the city. You mustn't tell me, please don't. Her happy go lucky. <laughs> I can just hear him now. Money isn't everything. Money only causes trouble. Married Ellen on a shoestring. <laughs> well, this time he'll find out what money can do. <laughs> listening to The Whistler, brought to you by your friend, the Signal Oil Company, marketers of famous Signal Gasoline, your best buy today. Remember to let every go signal remind you, you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. Now the pattern is clear. Ben Barlow, after 20 years, is planning to extract his revenge for his brother Tom's marrying the woman he loved. 
He's planning to ruin his brother with the promise of the money he found and then snatch it away at the last moment. And Tom, good old Tom, seems to be falling into the trap slowly, reluctantly, happily. <laughs> oh, 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 now, fellas, money isn't everything. Uh, we'll yeah. see if you say that when you get the 25000 <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> He's got four months to go yet. No, you said you chicken. <laughs> 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 the money's as good as in the bank. It's been eight weeks now, nobody's claimed it. And what do you expect going to claim it, anyhow? A gold year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tom, uh, I hear you and Ellen and the kid are planning a trip to New York to see all the shows. Huh? Well, maybe. Well, all I can say is if anybody deserves that money, it's Tom. Uh, 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 Tom, where were you? Well, Any person in the village won't be counting the days till six months ago. <laughs> about that money. Oh, now, leave her be, Ellen. It don't hurt thinking about it. Oh, Tom, can't you see what I mean? Can't you understand? We've always been happy, Tom, the three of us, without too much money. And now... Of course we have. Of course we have. And that's why I want you and Judy to have everything in the world. Why, you don't think I want the money for myself. Tom, listen. Let's withdraw our claim. Let's forget all about the money. What do you say? Tell the sheriff to give it to charity or something. Will you, Tom? Will you? Are you crazy? Oh, she's teasing you, Judy. I'm not teasing. I've got a funny feeling about that money. But, Ellen, dear, I'm, I'm kind of counting on it. We've already run up a few bills and all, and what with this little deal I'm working... And... Deal? What deal? Oh, nothing, Ellen. Uh, Judy... What deal, Tom? Just a little surprise. Hey, you know what I've been thinking? We all need a little vacation. Yes, sir. Get away from town for a while. Jerry Mason says that I could get $600 for the cab. Tom... And... You're not going to sell the cab. Well... Oh, Pa, that's wonderful. We could go to New York and see Radio City. And go to all the big shows and, and everything. Oh, Pa, I love you. You're so wonderful. Isn't he wonderful, Ma? Tom, you're not going to sell the cab. Please. Now, Ellen, don't you worry. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Yes, everything's going to be all right now, isn't it, Tom? You're getting more certain of it every day. It's been four months now, and you've almost forgotten about the stranger. But, uh, he hasn't forgotten about you, Tom. Oh, so the cab, Mrs. Wilmer. Yes, sir. Good, good. And now what about this man, Peterson? Uh, well, sir, Mr. Peterson uh, said that uh, everything was uh, going the way you wanted. Uh, that's fine. Good man, Peterson. Real good man. What else? Uh, what, what, sir? What else? Uh, well, sir... Uh, Come on, out with it. Uh, well, sir, there's talk around that Mr. Tom and... and, and uh, For the love of heaven, woman, will you go on? You told me never to mention Mrs. Barlow's name, sir. What about Mrs. Barlow? Uh, she and Mr. Tom aren't getting along so well. <laughs> good, good. So they're not getting along, huh? Now, isn't that too bad? Money isn't everything. You watch, Mrs. Wilney. He'll probably mortgage the house next. Money isn't everything. You watch, I know, Tom. He'll mortgage the house. And when you find that suicide note... Suicide note? Oh, didn't I tell you, Mrs. Oh. Wilney? You're going to discover a suicide note oh. in Guilford Inlet. <laughs> oh. And you're going to bring it straight to Sheriff Tompkins. Well, Ben, you have it all figured out, don't you? And it's working out just as you expected. Because when the sheriff tells Tom Barlow about the suicide note that was found at the bridge, you react just as your brother expected. But, Ellen, there's no need to worry. Now, with that suicide note found, the money's practically in our hands. I told you it was just as good as ours. But, Tom, why did you have to go put a mortgage on this house? Oh, don't you? You don't understand, dear. I needed the money now for that deal that I was working on. So why wait till the six months is up and lose out on a great opportunity? But, Tom, how can you spend money like this before you get it? But I'm not spending it, Ellen. I'm investing it for our future and Judy's. Oh. Why, why, Mr. Peterson told me we'd be set up for life. 
And as for the mortgage, well, that's just a trifle. I can pay that back ten times over the day I get the $25,000. The day you get the $25,000, Tom. The day you get it. Will that day ever come? Ben waits in the lonely house at Guilford Inlet, enjoying reports of your spending, spending, spending money you haven't got. <laughs> yeah, set up ten beers for the boys, Joel. You bet it won't be long now. <laughs> and one ale for Jerry. Yes, sir. Oh, hi, Sheriff. What did you have? Tom. Tom, I've got to talk to you for a second. Well, sure, Sheriff. What's on your mind? Do you know a man named... Peterson? Peterson? Well, I sure do. Come on, have a beer, Sheriff. Have any dealings with him? Well, this is important, Tom. Well, yes, yes, I did. He came to see me with a mighty attractive proposition, and I, well, I placed some money in his hands. Very much money? All I could get my hands on. Mm. Mm, mighty attractive proposition. Yeah, that's not good. It, it's not good? No. Tom, this Peterson, as he calls himself, is a well-known New York crook. What? Real name's Clark, Pinky Clark. Deals in phony stocks and bonds. No. He skipped town, and your money's gone with him. Tom, you've been swindled. So, Tom, now you know. The first blow has fallen. All your great dreams of wealth and affluence, gone in an instant. You were smart, weren't you, Tom? Very smart. Tom, why did you do it? Ah, uh, so smart, Ellen. You're going to be rich, going to be a big businessman. <laughs> Can you imagine me? I wanted to make you proud to be Mrs. Tom Barlow. Oh. Yes, I wanted you to walk down the street and have people point you out and say, Look, there goes Ellen Barlow. Oh, Tom. Yes, I never meant to be anything but Tom, the taxi driver. You're right, Ellen. All along you were right. You should have withdrawn our claim like you said. Money's brought us nothing but trouble. Tom, how much do you owe the bank? Eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Oh, Tom. Tom, we've just got to get that twenty-five thousand now. We've just got to. Yes, Tom, your situation is desperate now. You have to get that twenty-five thousand dollars now. It will just about pay off your debt, lift the mortgage on your house, and buy back the taxi. And then the real blow falls. The six months is up. It's the night before you're to claim the money, and it's dark and stormy. Another foreboding night like that one six months ago. And as you sit by your fireside, you're startled by a knock on the door. Hello, Tom. Well, I'm afraid I don't... Ben. Ben. Glad to see your old brother, Tom. Ben. I guess I'll have to invite myself in. Nasty night. Hmm. Nice little place you have here. Ben, what are you doing here? Now, that's a fine way to greet your brother after 20 years. Ben, what do you want? Still haven't changed, have you, Tom? Still hate your devoted brother, Ben. Well, Tom, it's taken 20 years. 20 years. But I've just about done it. Done what? Driver. Driver, is that Guilford Bridge up ahead? Huh? Stop when you get to the bridge, driver. I like walking. Ben. Don't you remember your old lucky passenger, Tom? Huh? Ben, you were... The man in the cab. No. No, the man in the cab was drowned. They found a suicide note. <laughs> ben, it was you. Twenty years, Tom. Twenty years, and I've come back. So money isn't everything, Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky. You'll find out, you and Ellen both. Right now, that 25000 is the most important thing in your life. And you're not going to get one red cent of it. I put it in your cab. I'm going to be at the sheriff's office... With serial numbers and identification. Money isn't everything. Eh? You married Ellen on a shoestring. You married the only woman I ever loved. You'll find out how important money is tomorrow morning. Uh, 
Now you know the whole plot, Tom. Now you know how you stand. The money you so desperately need is not yours and never will be. No need even to go down to the sheriff's office tomorrow morning. Because Ben will be there ahead of you. Unless... Unless... What if Ben didn't show up? What if Ben couldn't show up? Who would know but you? But that's murder you're thinking of, Tom. Murder. You've never done anything or thought anything like that. But tonight you're desperate and you think the whole thing out. It's simple, really. Ben's staying out at Guilford Inlet, alone in that big house. You can borrow the taxi back for a few hours and get out there. Drop his body in the inlet and... Yes, he's brought you to this, Tom. He's driven you to murder. A night just like the last time you drove out this way, isn't it, Tom? Stormy, dismal, dangerous. And you're driving faster than you should. You're almost to the bridge, Tom. Watch out. Uh, darn that windshield wiper, I can't... Good Lord, the bridge. It's out. <laughs> you the ending to our story in just a moment. Meantime, here are just a few of the signal services that are helping today's cars go farther. When your signal gasoline dealer lubricates your car, he uses the famous signal safety chart on which the maker of your car shows every lubrication point and the exact lubricant it should have. And your signal dealer checks every point against the safety chart, not just once, but twice, so not a single part can be missed. The signal four-star oil he puts in your motor is solvent refined to give you a pure paraffin-based oil that reduces carbon and sludge and protects every motor part with a tough, long-lasting film that resists heat and wear. His regular battery and tire checking service help you get extra months of wear. Should you need a new battery, his heavy-duty signal deluxe batteries are guaranteed up to two years. And his retread jobs using only the finest materials help you get more miles out of every tire. In those and a dozen other ways, signal dealers are helping today's cars go farther. You couldn't close New Year's Day with a better resolution than to get acquainted with your neighborhood signal gasoline dealer soon. Now, back to the Whistler. The next morning, a man staggered into the sheriff's office at Marblehead to claim the $25,000. He was battered and bleeding and drenched to the skin, but he was alive and able to take the money and go home to his wife, Ellen. Yes, Tom Barlow was able to jump clear of his car as it crashed through the demolished bridge. He came back to the sheriff's office just because he wanted to make sure. And he was considerably surprised when Ben didn't show up. He found out later why. Because when they pulled his wrecked taxi out of the inlet under Guilford Bridge, they found a body close by in the debris-choked water, Ben Barlow. Ben Barlow driving the other way in the early dawn to claim the money and complete his revenge hadn't seen that the bridge was down either until it was too late. <laughs> Monday at 9 o'clock, the Signal Oil program will bring you another strange tale by The Whistler. The Whistler is brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal's famous Go Farther gasoline and motor oil, and by your neighborhood Signal Oil dealer who is at your service daily to keep your car running for the duration. The Signal Oil program, produced by George W. Allen, with story by Louis Pelletier and Jacques Anson Fink, and music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Bob Anderson speaking for your friend, the Signal Oil Company, and suggesting once again that you let every go signal remind you that you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.